My friends, welcome to this tutorial about creating games with Solaris. Today we will do another example of automating some um, mechanism. So this example will be a little bit uh, more interesting than the previous one, which was about um, a switch to open to open a door. And this time we want to have some enemies in a room. And when we kill all enemies, it will open a door. So there are a lot of ways to do that actually, using, uh, for instance, custom properties or just the name of entities and meta tables and uh, yeah, all the knowledge that you already have. But um, yeah, we will do something similar to the previous tutorial, the one about a switch to open a door. Um, just for consistency, but yeah, just so you know, there are other ways to to do it. So let's see how do we do that. Um, we'll start with only one enemy, but then we'll make it work with multiple enemies in the same room. So we have a door here called called door A, and uh, yeah, a second door opposite in the next room called uh, door A two. You can see the name of entities here in the status bar if you hover the, the entity. And very similarly to what we did for, with the switch, we will add a custom property, a user property here, to uh, our enemy. And let's call it door prefix again. And the door prefix will be door A, which is the name of uh, our door and also the prefix of both doors. So, okay. And to make it work with only one enemy, it will actually be very similar to what we did for the switch. So, let's see. Let's make a meta table script here. You can call it enemy.lua. And first, I will require it from features.lua. Otherwise, I know that I will forget. <laughs> and our enemy uh, meta table script will do as always. We get the meta table. We can call it enemy meta. Sol dot main dot get meta table and the name of the type enemy. And as you know, everything that we put in the meta table will uh, impact all enemies ever. So let's add the event on dead and all enemies will have it, even the ones who don't have the property. So we'll get the property and check if it exists. And if not, we will do nothing. So first local Let's create a variable called enemy, um, which is self. So self is the name of the first parameter when you use the semicolon syntax here. It's equivalent to put it, putting the parameter explicitly and calling it self. But let's use the object-oriented notation Okay, we get the enemy, we get the door prefix. So enemy get property door prefix. So it's the name of the property that we put here, the key. And now the value will be in that variable. So let's see if it exists. If yes, then it means that this enemy is or was since is already dead linked to a door okay at this point we can get the map of the enemy and we can open the door or the doors if like me you have uh, multiple doors with the same prefix that should get opened. Okay, so this code should work, but only with one enemy in the room. Oh, sorry. 
what's wrong here um oh okay probably some code from a previous tutorial let's just ignore that okay let me show you the code again while i'm testing it so that you can see oh i don't have a sword <laughs> that's gonna be hard but maybe it will ball no <laughs> anyway uh, let's fix my initial game code set ability sword okay let's try again okay so it works but for now it's not really different from the previous tutorial uh, it's really just like a switch except that we used undead instead of unactivated uh, the very the more, more interesting part is how do we deal with multiple enemies we want the door to open when the last enemy having this door prefix dies and to do that one simple way is to um, instead of immediately opening the door we can do a little search and for instance we can get all enemies in uh, the map so get entities of type map so when you do a search on entities uh, it's always good to use some filters like get, get entities of type or get entities inside uh, some region um, like separated by uh, separators because these functions are more optimized than uh, just looping over all entities of all types and of all coordinates so here I'm only getting the entities of type enemy not of type map it doesn't make sense and since you don't have usually thousands of enemies in your map this will still be fast and okay if other first we can uh, filter out the case where other is just ourself, ourselves and we want to check if other get property does it have also the door prefix property and with the same value so is that other enemy uh, linked to the same door and just to be sure is it still really alive because maybe both maybe two enemies are dying at the same frame so if we find an enemy that is not us and that is linked to the same door and that is still alive then we don't want to open the door we just return and, and let's close this uh, okay this block I think that's that should be pretty much it um, what get entities of type oh it's by type I could also just check the documentation right oh that's <laughs> nice nice test I just killed uh, both enemies at the exact I think maybe at the same frame and it's it worked uh, oh, my door was saved. Um, I don't really want to save the door in this example. We could al also make more complicated, um, more general code to, for instance, avoid the, I mean, sa save the door state and not recreate the enemies. You can do a lot of things. Ah. I'm really bad at this. Okay, it works. 
cool. So really the only slightly complicated thing is that we added uh, this little uh, search to make sure that we are killing the last remaining enemy. But um, yeah, there are a lot of ways. There are other ways to to achieve the same result. We we could have do, done actually the opposite, probably something based on a custom properties of doors. We let let's say putting a custom a user property uh, that is actually the prefix of some enemies. And if all enemies having this prefix um, are dead, then we open the door. And um, yeah, actually, uh, you can maybe you could consider this uh, that that may, that way um, simpler because there is actually a, a function in the API uh, map get entities that will get all entities starting with the same prefix, and you even have map has entities. Um, let me show you the documentation that. So if you are interested, you can try to redo this tutorial, but uh, by searching all, all enemies are starting with some prefix instead of putting the putting the the user property on on the enemies, you could put the custom property on the door and give a name to your enemies instead. So redo the opposite. And the functions that are talking, I was talking about uh, has entities prefix. This one is really handy. Um, we even put it in the documentation that this function can be used, for example, to check, uh, no, check, yeah, there is a typo, whether a group of enemies is dead. So that can be useful. But in this tutorial, I wanted to stay to stay consistent and with um, the what we did for the switch. So it's the door who has a name, and it's the enemies that are linked to the door. But yeah, again, there are other ways to to do it. Even in that way, with um, the door having the custom property, the it would it would be possible to even avoid the uh, to even make any search, but um, that requires a little bit more logic, and I wanted to to show how you can do this type of search and um, that, to show you that you have to be careful and check a lot of things. Maybe you even want to check that um, the enemy uh, is enabled and things like that oops is enabled so yeah it really depends on, on on what you what you need in your game but um yeah get entities by type and there are a lot of functions to get entities from various filters get entities by type um so this this one will will be very fast because it will internally avoid a, a loop on all entities of the map but only return directly the entities of that type so enemies in our case you also have in rectangle or in region rectangle is just in inside some coordinates uh, and in region is it means in a region uh, limited by separators so here for instance in that room oops in that room so you can do the, this kind of stuff. So yeah, a lot of nice ways to find some entities. And in rectangle or in region, the, these also are very fast. Internally, if you are interested, they use uh, quad trees, again, to, to avoid linear search uh, of entities. So it will still be fast, even if you have a lot of things in your in your map. Um, okay, so this was a slightly more complicated example and uh, again, multiple solutions to, to what we did today. Uh, I actually had a hard time uh, deciding uh, 
which way I would show you, but I ended up deciding uh, this one because it, I, I think it's still the, the most straightforward. And um, yeah, if, if you can avoid the search, it's, it's even better, but really it, it will not impact performance at all to just search all enemies. I mean, get all enemies and loop over it uh, every time an enemy is dead. It's really nothing. So don't over optimize uh, sometimes it's it's really just fine uh, okay mm, I hope you you enjoyed this tutorial and I will see you next time bye